Part 2, Chapter 23 of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 23 The Crusades, A.D. 1096 to 1270. The origin of the Crusades is to be found in the occupation of Palestine by the Mohammedan conquerors. The pilgrims from Europe cherished the warmest attachment to the sacred places. The Mohammedans not only now occupied them, but persecuted the pilgrims. The sanctuaries were profaned, and the venerated patriarchs thrown into prison. Christian merchants from Pisa, Amalfi, Genoa, and other rich Italian ports were fortunate if they escaped with their lives. The evil reports came back to Europe, and took practical form in military expeditions against the Mohammedans. These were called Crusades because of the cross, crux, worn by the warriors. Peter the Hermit was the apostle of the First Crusade. Pope Gregory the Seventh was the first, it is believed, who conceived the idea of sending from Europe an armed expedition, not only to punish the Mohammedan rulers, but to occupy the country and rule it as a Christian nation. His successors, Victor the Third and Urban the Second, indulged the same strong hope. All that was wanting was a popular leader, some one to fire the heart of Christian Europe. This man was Peter the Hermit. He had been a soldier under the Counts of Boulogne, but forsook his military career, made a journey to Palestine, and saw the indignities suffered by the pilgrims. Here he was aroused to great enthusiasm in favor of the conquest of the country by Christians from Europe. To Simeon, the patriarch of Jerusalem, who was comparatively helpless, the eastern emperor not being able to do anything for the Christians, Peter said, The nations of the West shall take up arms in your cause. Peter was true to his pledge. He returned to Europe, traveled through the German countries, and roused the people to a frenzy of indignation against the Moslem faith. He presented a singular spectacle. He was a dwarf, wore neither shoes nor hat, and rode through central Europe on an ass. His appeals were irresistible. The multitudes regarded him as the representative of a holy cause, and through him organized the First Crusade. The varied fortunes of the Crusades furnish a striking historical picture. We find a rich combination of light and shade. Peter the Hermit and Walter the Penniless were the humble organizers of the great movement. Some military leaders rallied to their standard. The best blood of Europe was burning with sympathy with Christians in their aspirations to kneel beside the Holy Sepulchre at Jerusalem and rule over the land in which Jesus had lived. Six different armies constituted the First Crusade. They numbered 600,000 people, who were led by Godfrey, Hugh the Great, Tanered, Raymond of Toulouse, and Robert of Normandy. This crusade, begun in 1096, resulted in the capture of Jerusalem within two years, with Godfrey of Bouillon as king of the sacred city. The next crusade was on a still more magnificent scale. The kingdom of Jerusalem was threatened. St. Bernard was the apostle. The kings became leaders. Louis VII of France and Conrad III of Germany led 1,200,000 men against the Saracens. The great object was to reduce Damascus as a support to the kingdom of Jerusalem. It was a failure, and only the mere fragments of the armies reached Europe again. Saladin, the great Mohammedan chief, conquered Jerusalem in 1187, and this was the signal for a new attempt to rescue the holy city and the entire country. Germany under Frederick Barabosa, France under Philip Augustus, and England under Richard Cœur de Leon, united in a great crusade. This was a failure because of division among the leaders, but they succeeded in gaining from Saladin one concession, namely the freedom of Christians from taxes and from molestation in visiting the sacred city. A fourth crusade, begun by the Knights of St. John, proved a failure. The Children's Crusade, organized in 1212, 
shows the extent to which the wild fanaticism of the times could go thirty thousand boys united under the leadership of a shepherd boy stephen of vendome set sail from marseilles for palestine some of the vessels were wrecked while the rest were driven ashore on the egyptian coast where the deluded boys were sold as slaves the sixth crusade under the direction of frederick the second of germany proved a success palestine was ceded to the emperor and became a christian land the seventh crusade lost all that the preceding had won the mohammedans recaptured the country the last crusade was under the guidance of louis the ninth of france commonly called saint louis because of his deep piety and high moral principle Kebel, in his christian year thus describes him where shall the holy cross find rest on a crowned monarch's mailed breast like some bright angel o'er the darkling scene through court and camp he holds his heavenward course serene after his death edward i of england took the leadership but this crusade also was a hopeless failure the land was in undisputed possession of the mohammedans europe was exhausted the cause was lost while the direct object of the crusades was not gained there were important indirect results first of all it is likely that but for this important diversion to the moslem conquerors they would have invaded europe in such vast masses as to gain a permanent foothold the bravery of the christians their ungovernable enthusiasm and their self-denial as shown in the crusades proved to the mohammedans the character of the foe with which they had to deal they found that the western and northern christians were far different from those populations of the eastern empire which they had easily conquered the crusades with all their waste of men and treasure seemed to have saved france and central germany and scandinavia and even britain from the hand of the saracen they arrested him held him at bay and inspired in him a healthy terror of the christian soldier from which he has never been relieved the positive benefits of the crusades towards the development of the people are numerous the old feudal system of private warfare had long been a curse to the empire the knight with his retainers could make war on his brother knight all of central and western europe was torn up by this feudal and predatory system the crusades broke it up and bound the people together by a common law when the last crusader came home from palestine he found himself the member of a broad commonwealth and not the head of a clan the cruelty of rulers was arrested the voice of the people was heard for the first time and kings learned that there was a limit to their authority commerce took larger and freer shape the far eastern countries were brought into close relationship with the western some new sciences such as medicine and astronomy were introduced into europe as a field for literature the crusades have inspired many writers in all subsequent times as an aid for comprehending their spirit and the age in which they were organized we may reckon sir walter scott's novels the talisman the betrothed and count robert of paris the scenes of which were laid in those heated times End of chapter 23